Hello, good afternoon. My name is Tanisha Gardner, and today's message is called Show Me Your Glory. Show Me Your Glory. First, I would like to give a shout out to Dr. Hux, our biblical preaching uh, professor, all his wisdom and all the information he's given to us to have this opportunity to be able to share uh, a word that God has re relayed on our hearts to share with other people. Um, I'm also going to post this on my YouTube channel. So if you have not already, please subscribe and hit that little notification bell below so that you can be made aware of any new videos that I post. Again, the name of this message is called Show Me Your Glory. Let's go on ahead and pray. Dear Father God in heaven, Lord, your word is life to us, oh Father God. I ask you, Lord, in this in this moment, allow me to decrease so that you can increase, oh Father God. I ask you to take this, these words that are upon feeble lips and a feeble tongue, oh Father God. And I ask you to impart knowledge and wisdom and understanding, oh Father God, to be a blessing to the people that hear it and the person that's going to say it, Lord. In your holy and precious name, I do pray. Amen, amen, amen. Let's go on ahead and get into it. The scripture that we're going to be taking this from it's from the book of Exodus chapter 33, okay? The book of Exodus chapter 33, and we're going to be reading from um, 12 to 23. I'm going to read. You can read along if you want to. I'll give you a second or two so you can go ahead and pull your Bible out. If you're not familiar with this passage, become familiar with it because there are some amazing gems to be seen, all right? We're going to start with verse 12. Oh, King James Version, okay? And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou saith unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I might find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. So right here, there's some interceding going on. Take note of that. And he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us up no hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people, okay, so Moses interceding again, have found grace in thy sight. Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken for, thou hast found grace in my sight and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, thou cannot see my face for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me that thou shalt stand upon a rock and it shall come to pass while my glory shall pass by. And I will put thee in a cleft of the rock and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take Away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Amen. I, I love that scripture. I love that scripture. Let's take a look at Moses, okay? Let's, let's kind of dive into the man Moses, all right, that kind of leads up to where he is right now. You see, a lot of us are already familiar with the story of Moses. He was Basically, he was a, he was an orphan. His mother had put him up because of some th some some dynamics that were going on. So he was raised in the house of Pharaoh. So for the first forty years or so of his life, he was raised um, as royalty. He he dressed in the royal garbs. He he had his hair fastened like the like the royal men of Pharaoh's household. He had privileges. He was educated like the other Egyptian royal men was. But there was always something different about Moses. There was this thing within his heart that told him he wasn't like the other people in Pharaoh's household. Now, God had commissioned Moses. He had been a, a sheep herder. He had fled into the wilderness, and now he was a sheep herder. Um, and God had shown himself to him through, through, through the way of a burning bush. So no longer had he 
No longer was he walking in the authority of being royalty of Pharaoh's household. He was humble. Moses spent 40 years herding Jethro's sheep. He was a married man now. He had changed. There's a lot of changes that he had went through. And now God had commissioned him at the burning bush. He commissioned him to go to Egypt and to, and to command that Pharaoh let his people go. He went to Egypt, commanded Pharaoh to let his people go. And then now here is Moses with all these people. Okay, and in case, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of backdrop, okay? In the previous chapter, in chapter 32, these people were showing out, okay? They, they had fell by the wayside. They were, they were worshiping uh, a golden calf along with his brother Aaron. And now Moses was in a difficult, difficult situation. Moses was discouraged. Moses was probably at his wits end. Moses really did not know what to do, okay? But so far, I'm just giving you a backdrop of the history that God and Moses had thus far, okay? So in verse 18, amongst all this history that they had, Moses is asking God, show me your glory. God, show me your glory. I want you to show us that you're going to be with us. Now in the Hebrew, the, the word glory is, uh, is, is pronounced kabet. And there's many different reasons for kabet. But there's, there's one of them that caught me was heaviness. It's a, it's a, it could be the heaviness of, of, of like a weight. It can be the glory, it can be kindness, it can be many, many different things, but it's a heaviness of kind of a, of a good thing. And the original meaning of kabet in Hebrew means liver. So you're probably asking yourself, well, why are you telling us that? Well, let's, let's take a look at what the actual liver does for the body. What's the purpose of a liver? The liver is a purifier, it, it purifies things. Uh, it, and, it, and some people, I'm not trying to be grotesque, but some people, feast on liver, the, the liver of animals and things like that, because it's so nutritionally, nutritionally dense and has so many, so many values in it. Okay. But the liver is, is, is something that, that is something that is very, very important. It, 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 it produces, it produces a purification. It produces a washing. All right. So what Moses is asking is Lord, show us that, show us, show, show us your kindness. He's saying, show us this heaviness, show us this mercy, show us this sanctification, show, show us this. That's what he's asking you. And in case you didn't know, God is loaded with goodness. He's loaded with purification. All right. Now, to speak of this, um, this exodus that the children of Israel had, 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 had been delivered by the hand of God, that exodus was rooted in grace. That entire transition from them being in the wilderness to where they are right now in this chapter, God has shown them time and time and time again his mercy, his provision. He's shown them his kindness. He, sh he showed him the, uh, the, the glory, all right? Um, there's, in this passage, there's three relationships that we, can, that we can really hone in on, okay? There's a relationship between God and Moses and their interaction by way of this conversation of them going back and forth. But then there's the relationship between Moses and his people. Okay. There is, there's a relationship between Moses and his people in two different instances that I just shared with you. Moses, not just was speaking to God on his behalf, but he bought his people. He was interceding for his people as well. So that's the second relationship. The third relationship is with God and Moses' people, the Israelites, Moses' people. And with this, and with these three different dynamics, we're able to take a look at them. And God is revealing himself to us by way of these three by way of these three relationships in the midst of this conversation. And Moses asking God, God, show me your glory. Okay. So what happens after that? In verse 22, God says, I will make my glory pass by you. Now, in different translations, they use different words. In some translations, they say the word glory. Some say my kindness. Some say my goodness. But either way, we're all talking about the weight, the heaviness. We're talking about the character of God, his glory. But why did, why did Moses want to see God's glory? Why did Moses want to see God's glory? Moses felt insecure in this whole situation. He knew the things that had transpired. He felt insecure. He needed confirmation that God was still going to continue to be with him and the children of Israel. Okay. He wanted, he, he knew that they had sinned and shown out in the first chapter. I mean, in the previous chapter, but he wanted to know, are you still with us? Do you still love us? Are you still going to go with us? 
if you're not, don't take us nowhere else. Just leave us here. That's basically what he's saying. And he's saying, Moses is saying, prove to me your presence is still with us. Show us your glory. Show me your glory. Moses wanted assurance. That's what Moses wanted. Moses wanted assurance. A lot of times that's what we want. We want assurance. We get insecure. We need confirmation because some things in our personal lives have transpired and we don't know what, don't know what to do. So let's go on with the story. So what did God do? Did he ignore him? Did he say no? Did he say you're not good enough? No. God revealed to him his glory. Now, some people say this glory is the physical magnificence of God. Other people say that this glory is his splendor and the brightness of his, of his countenance. That's his glory. I'm not saying that's wrong, but I want us to shed light on the glory of his character, on the, on the, the vastness of his humility, the extreme reverence he has and the prolific adoration, his grace and his love. Imagine this character, this glory of God, being so strong in like an infinite degree that it's so powerful that human existence can't stand in that glory. Imagine that. But what did God do? He says, I'm going to show you. And he was able to cover him and allow him to see, allow him to see the back parts of his glory. So I want you to think in your mind of a shooting star, right? I'm sure all of us have had the opportunity to see a shooting star. So when you see a shooting star, usually like there's like the core of it and it's kind of slowly passing by to where you see like the tail of it and the tail of it and it kind of just gets lighter and lighter and lighter. So kind of picture that in your mind of a meteor or, or a falling star going by. That's basically what God was able to show Moses was kind of like the tail end of his glory, a beautiful representation. I want to share with you a quick story. I remember several weeks ago, I was um, at a thrift store, right? And I love thrift shopping. I love thrift shopping. You can find some really good things and some amazing deals in there too. And um, I always make it a habit of going by the going by the, the book section of the thrift stores and kind of just leafing through the books and seeing what kind of things that I might be interested in. And I remember on this one particular occasion, I came across a whole set, a couple sets of accordances. These were old accordances, but they were biblical commentaries and um, um, other uh, sermon outline Bibles, a whole collection. There was a bunch of them. And I saw them and I kind of leafed through one of them and I was like, ah, these things are from the 50s and 60s and there's so many, I'm just gonna keep, I'm just gonna keep going. So I continued walking around throughout the store and looking around at things and I just felt like this nudge, go back and look at those Bibles again, look at those commentaries again. So I went back and looked at the commentaries and I was like, hmm, man, these are really nice and I could really use them, especially being in, being in seminary. So I saw the manager walk by and I said, excuse me, ma'am. I said, could you tell me about these commentaries? How much do you want for these sets? And so she looked at him real quick and she says, she says, oh, all the Bibles are free. All the Bibles are free. I said, oh man, these, these aren't Bibles. These are, these are kind of the commentaries. They're, they're outline books, you know, for kind of, they're studying the Bible, but not necessarily, not necessarily Bibles. And I want to get all three sets. So she stopped and she looked and she looked. She's like, give me a second. Let me run back to the back and speak to someone. I says, okay. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, so what would be too much? How much can I afford for these books? So she comes back and she comes and she, she says to me, she says, well, um, make me an offer. I said, make you an offer? She said, yeah, make me an offer. So I started thinking in my mind, I knew how much each book was. And I started counting the books. One, two, three, four, five. And by the time I got to book 21, she stopped me and she said, you know what? You can just have them. I said, I can have them. She said, yeah, you can take them, take all of them. I said, all three sets, I'm talking about this set, this set, and I turned around, and I said, this set too? She's like, yeah, you can have them. I said, oh my gosh, thank you so much. I told her I was in seminary. I told her I was doing some studying of the word and needed some good commentaries. I thanked her a thousand times. I got the, I got the, the commentary, I got a big old car shopping cart of them, took them to the front, and I said to her, I said, you know, I feel so bad. I feel like I should give you something. I just, this, this, you're blessing me so much. I have to give you something. And she said, well, here, give me a high five. So I gave her a high five and I kind of blushed and I took the books and put them in the trunk of the car. And I went to the house and in case you didn't, in case you want to see them, they're right here. The last three of them are them. And so I got on eBay 
and I got on Amazon and I began to type up the things that I had. And to make a really long story short, those three sets are about $1,800 worth of books. And I, when I saw that and I saw the blessing and I got home and I started leafing through it, I said to myself, I said, Lord, you provide. I said, Lord, thank you for giving this to me. You see, in this story, God was showing me not only is he going to provide for my needs, my educational needs, he also reminded me of his kindness by way of this woman. He reminded me that he was in this journey with me. He was in this transition phase with me. He wasn't going to leave me. So I also want you to see God's character in your own life, what God is doing for you and, 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 how, and how he wants to show you his glory, but you have to give him an opportunity to. Well, so let's get back to Moses. There's two things that we can learn from Moses. Moses was persistent with God. Many times he said, Lord, show me who you are. God, I will show me your glory. He just kept on and kept on and kept on. And that's just in this passage. We're not talking about the rest of his lifetime and the com many conversations and dialogues that are documented that Moses had with God, but he had a very close, intimate relationship with God. Now with the relation, the other, the, the all three other relationships that we spoke about earlier, there, um, there's some more revealing that we need to discover about God's glory. He's a covenant keeper. It, the, in the next chapter, it goes on about the covenant and how God went into a covenant with the people of the, the, the people of Israel. But God is revealing his kindness to us, his kindness in that story with the lady at the thrift store. And I'm sure you guys have plenty of testimonies of God's kindness. Kindness is a part of God's glory, the provision and how he provides, the protection that he gives us is a part of God's glory. He protected the, the, the children of Israel, the, the salvation that, that, was, that was constantly presented to them, the doctrine of God and who he is, him revealing himself. God's consistency, and at times we aren't consistent. He's showing to us in these relationships his forgiveness. He's showing us his infinite love. And not only, it's not like a, it's not a, a one-way kind of love. It's not a selfish kind of love. It's a mutual love between the creator and the creature. You see, Moses and God had a close mutual love for each other, and God knew that. There are benefits to having a relationship with Christ. We're able to ask him things. God, show us your glory. A lot of times when we go through our own trials and tribulations, it's kind of hard to think of God's loving kindness and his mercies. But when you're in the midst of it, when you're in the thick of it, when you're in between a rock and a hard place, I want you to say, God, show me your glory. When I'm getting, when I'm going through this exam, Lord, show me your glory. Lord, when I'm trying to financially clear for school, show me your glory. When you get sick or someone in your family gets sick, Lord, show me your glory. Lord, when I'm going through this divorce, show me your kindness. God, I just got into his car accident. God, show me your glory. God wants to show you his glory, okay? God makes himself av available to humanity. So he's not just some far off deity that's, that's not going to answer to us. He wants to have that interpersonal connection with us that he had with Moses in the scripture. Some of us need an exodus. Some of us are on an exodus of deliverance. I want you to reflect what God, I want you to reflect God showing you his glory. Reflect on what that meant to you. And it's crazy because unless we stop and actually think God was here, God was there, taking time out to actually speak to him the way that Moses was, was doing, asking God questions. It, remor it, excuse me, it reminds me of the gospel story, the story between, between, between Jesus and all of humanity. The greatest love story, if you ask me, the greatest love story ever told was a story of God, was Jesus at Calvary and how he was crucified for us, crucified for mankind. I want you to make a decision. I want you to, to go into alignment with God. I want you to develop that relationship with him. I want you to take that relationship to the next level. Not just, we're not gonna practice just mere Christianity. We're gonna take our relationship and have it be a relationship that's got substance to where we can ask God, God, show me your glory. God, show me your kibbeth. Show me, show me the heaviness of, of who you are because there's a transforming power. There's a rejuvenation and we all need rejuvenation. I want you to make that decision. I want you to raise your hand. Lord, I want you to show me your glory. If you want God 
to show you his glory. Raise your hand. God, I want you to show me your glory. God, I want to be in relationship with you, God. I want to go into covenant with you, Lord. I want to see your character, Lord. But not only that, I want my character to reflect your character. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Dear Father, God in heaven, Lord. <coughs> I'm thinking, excuse me. <coughs> I'm thanking you, Lord, for your love and your grace. I'm thanking you, God, for your tender mercies, Lord. I'm thanking you for this message, oh God. I'm thanking you for the story of Moses and, and the conversation he had with you, Father Lord, about, about you showing him your glory, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to be able to read this, oh God. Allow this to manifest itself in our minds, oh Lord, so that we can take our relationship to the next level, God. Anything that separates us from you, we ask you to separate us from it as the east is from the west, oh God. I'm thanking you again for your love. Thank you for this word. Be with my fellow seminarians and the people that view this video, Lord. Thank you so much for everything you've done. You know, I do pray. Amen, amen, amen. Blessings on you.